Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Lettuce Nollies, the Tudor Royal Love Triangle. During the Tudor period, to get on the wrong side of the monarchy was something that you could pay for with your life. Henry VIII was known for executing those who disagreed with him, and he would not make exemptions on this even for close friends. However, Elizabeth I would also be regarded as equally as stubborn, and she was a woman who you certainly did not want to get on the wrong side of. She was, of course, the daughter of Henry VIII, and was known for having a fiery side. One woman who did encounter the fierce nature of the Queen was Lettuce Nollies, who, when looking at some images of her, could easily be mistaken for Elizabeth I herself and her large, spectacular gowns and red hair. However, she incurred the wrath of the Queen following her marriage to a man many have deemed to have been Elizabeth's true love. Lettuce was a grandniece of Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn, and together they were close. Her father was a member of Parliament and was the master of the horse for Edward VI. With this, it meant that Lettuce's family were key players at court, and Lettuce, as a child, was close friends with Elizabeth I. When Elizabeth became queen, the Nollies remained prominent players at court, with her father becoming the vice chamberlain of the royal household, her mother becoming a senior lady of the bedchamber, and Lettuce herself becoming a maid of the privy chamber. Inside of court, it was said she was popular and remained close by the Queen. However, at the age of roughly 17, she married Walter Devereux, the Vice Count Hereford. Together they lived in Chartley in Staffordshire, and they had five children. Lettuce was described as one of the best-looking ladies at court and a favourite of Elizabeth. However, whilst at court, she enjoyed the compliments and company of other men. Whilst Lettuce was pregnant with her first son, she began to strike up a flirty relationship with none other than Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester. Dudley, for some time, had been the favourite of Elizabeth, and historians have debated whether in fact he slept with Elizabeth. It's believed that the couple were in love, and that Robert Dudley could have very easily been King Consort of England, and he would have become very powerful, and in some people's eyes, the rightful ruler. The flirtations between Lettuce and Dudley had angered the Queen greatly, and when she found out, she became intensely jealous and was furious. Lettuce Nollies was sent back to Staffordshire, where she gave birth to a son, Robert. Robert would later become the second Earl of Essex, and would be someone that would, despite a large age gap, capture the eye of Queen Elizabeth. Lettuce had two more sons after Robert, but one died shortly after birth. Whilst her husband Walter was away, after he embarked on a mission to put the English in Ulster, it's believed Lettuce began a love affair with Robert Dudley, the man she had previous flirtations with, that offended Elizabeth so greatly. In 1573, she was given a gift of venison from Dudley's castle at Kenilworth, which I'm sure is what every Tudor woman would have wanted, and she then visited him regularly at Kenilworth, where the pair went hunting together. Lettuce Nollies was also present when Robert Dudley entertained the Queen for 19 days at Kenilworth Castle and remained close with her. After this, she then hosted the Queen herself. Following Walter Devereux's return to England, there was great speculation about his wife. It was said, As the thing is publicly talked of in the streets, there can be no harm in my writing openly about the great enmity between the Earl of Leicester and the Earl of Essex. In consequence, it is said the fact that whilst Essex was in Ireland, his wife had two children by Leicester. Great discord is expected in consequence. The rumours raged on, and Lettuce was at the heart of them, and she was accused of killing a child to prevent her husband discovering her affair. But there is no evidence to support this. Lettuce's husband did pass away, and the rumours continued that he was poisoned by Robert Dudley. But... It was thought that he passed from natural causes, and an investigation even had to be ordered to prove this. After this, Lettuce's lands she was given were rather poor in establishing her a significant amount of wealth and money. She was slightly at a loss, but one of the greatest things that would offend the Queen was her second marriage. It was clear that Robert Dudley and Lettuce Nollies were close, and they married on the 21st of September 1578 at 7am in the morning. It was a small ceremony with six people there, and it was believed that Lettuce was wearing a loose gown, alluding to the fact she may have been pregnant again. But Dudley himself was also a widower. He wished to marry the Queen for a long time, and he understood that Elizabeth's reaction to his and Lettuce's marriage would be a raging one. 
When the Queen was told of the marriage, Letty Studley was banned presently from court and she was never forgiven. Elizabeth was completely distraught that the man she very truly loved had married one of her closest friends and that she had known since she was a child. Letty Studley gave birth to the heir to Robert Dudley, Robert Lord Denbrick, in the June of 1581, and she was considered pregnant again after. With regards to their relationship, it was said Lettice had much influence over him, but the two were close. Lord Denbigh, the child, died at a young age, and Dudley stayed away from court to comfort his wife and grieve. But he was involved in court still, unlike his wife. Following an expedition in 1585 to help against the Spanish, Dudley accepted the title Governor-General the following year. This angered Elizabeth greatly, as there was a rumour that Lettice would follow her husband to the Netherlands, with such a train of ladies and gentlewomen, and such rich coaches and side saddles, and Her Majesty had none, and that there should be a court of ladies, as should pass Her Majesty's court. With this, Elizabeth felt threatened that Lettice Dudley was establishing herself as a Queen of the Netherlands and creating a court to rival hers. Dudley later died, and Lettice was with him when he passed away on the 4th of September 1558, and she found herself a widow once again. But, six months after Dudley's death, she married Christopher Blount, a poor Catholic soldier twelve years younger than her. He had been the gentleman of the horse for her former husband, and the marriage took many by surprise, and it was said that it was an unhappy marriage. Lettice continued to be known as Lady Leicester, but she was still banished from court. She moved house and saw no point in returning to London without reconciling with the Queen. She did travel to London in 1598 and was granted a meeting with the Queen, and Lettice kissed the Queen and the Queen kissed her, but nothing massively changed. After the imprisonment of Robert Devereux, Lettice, his mother, tried to get some relief for her son, and she sent Elizabeth presents. However, her efforts made things worse, and he was later executed for treason against Elizabeth. She also lost her third husband, Sir Christopher Blount, who was executed in 1601. The executions of her son and husband led to issues around Lettice's property, but after the death of Queen Elizabeth I in 1603, her fortunes changed slightly. Her grandson was named the third Earl of Essex, and her debts to the Crown were cancelled. During her long life, Lettice Nollies was a caring mother and grandmother, and her daughters remained her closest companions until they died. Also, the third Earl of Essex also spent much time of his with Lettice, However, at the age of 90, she still remained healthy. She was known for walking a mile a day, but at the age of 91, on the 25th of December 1634, she died. She was seen as a figure of the Tudor court and lifestyle, and she wished to be buried at Warwick with her husband, Robert Dudley. This was respected, and she was interred there. So Lettice Nollies was the woman who dared to get on the wrong side of Queen Elizabeth I. Her relationship with Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, got her into a significant degree of trouble, as did her marriage to him. Dudley was seen as the Queen's favourite, and because of the marriage, she was forced out of court. Lettuce Nollies lived to the remarkable age of 91, which for the Tudor period was unbelievable, and the average age for someone was much lower. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.